Another one of our early artists was Amelia Watson. Amelia came here early on and first sojourned as a guest of William Gillette up at Thousand Pines in Gillette Woods. This is an example of one of her watercolors. And uh, Amelia was a nationally known watercolor painter, very professional, supported herself her entire art life uh, painting. And at that time, it wasn't as easy for a woman as a man, and she was pretty proud that she was able to make a good living um, as a professional painter. She would, in the summertime, go up to Martha's Vineyard and was the instructor in painting at a summer school for teachers there. And in the wintertime, she would then come to Tryon, and she made enough money that she uh, built her own home and studio on Melrose Circle, again, uh, just between Alan Peoples' house and the little house that was Rolls. And that was quite a magnet uh, for people to come. And she would work on her paintings over the winter, uh, many of them from sketches that she had made in the summer in the north. Uh, we have another great example of her work, probably painted here, uh, now in the permanent collection of Lanier Library, and it's a scene of Canada. Isn't that right, Noel? Noel? Yes. Where are you? Yes. Isn't that, didn't we get one of Canada? Yes. Her sister lived in Canada, so she spent a lot of time there. Uh, but these scenes, this, this one I showed you here happens to be Boston Common. She, she was from New England. And uh, we've got one up there that was of Canada, but probably painted here. And uh, Amelia Watson very successfully sold a lot of paintings uh, with a business model that is something like a trunk show. I bet you ladies at least know what a trunk show is like. You get invited uh, often to someone's house. And we know from an old newspaper that uh, Miss Frances Wright and Dr. Angel, her partner, uh, had a very successful show uh, that was reported in uh, the Tryon B at that time, where everybody got invited to their house. And Amelia's paintings from that winter were on exhibit uh, in the home. A bunch of people came, and every single painting on display was sold at that one party. So uh, another way to go about it. <laughs> <laughs>
That's a lot of money yeah. for them. You could rent a house in Tryon for $20 a month. <laughs> Tryon's art scene was strong enough that they all found ways to um, make a living. And many of them, like Mr. Aid, um, did it by being commissioned to do portraits. <laughs> portraits. He was an excellent portrait artist. Uh, we have here an example of one of his portraits. Uh, this was done during the depths of the Depression. We know exactly what year this was, don't we? 1933, isn't it? When the banks were failing. This is little Miss Mary Adelaide Hester and her proud mother uh, commissioned this from Mr. Aid um, at that time. It's a medium called French chalk, and there are a number of these in private collections around town. They're kind of unmistakable. Even if they didn't have a signature, you would recognize these George Aid portraits in, the, in this medium. He also did uh, oil portraits, beautiful oil portraits. He became, became very well known for these. And besides um, people commissioning him at his studio, he also went up to the Junior League in Asheville and showed examples of this kind of work uh, and got commissions that way from people all over the country. So it's kind of like Rich Nelson does now. <laughs> um, you know, these, these things have been going on for a long time. The portrait artists uh, uh, kind of spread the word. And even before the internet, they had ways to spread the word of uh, what their work looked like and how good they were.